And I heard on the street, Taraji, you had the audacity to say you're thinking about getting, stopping acting. We said, stop talking. Hmm. Are you thinking about it? I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm. And if I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the fuck am I doing? I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Reflecting on past and recent occurrences, particularly in Hollywood and the entertainment industries, it is very saddening seeing what black folks go through every day in order to eke a living, ranging from resentment, oppression, poultry pays, marginalization, and so many other disheartening experiences faced by blacks. One tends to agree that race and skin color are the basis for the unfair treatments often meted out on the black folks by whites. But when these unfair treatments come from blacks against fellow blacks, what then can be said about it? It is pathetically shocking how those who are in good positions to help lift and make best the careers of fellow black folks abandon them to wallow in mediocrity and dissatisfaction from giving more value and getting meager remuneration in return as opposed to their other counterparts. And for what offense exactly? Solely for being born black. Welcome to yet another interesting video segment. In this video, we are going to be talking about blacks working against blacks. Before we continue, don't forget to support our works by hitting that like button before you, share with your families and friends to keep spreading our eye-opening black narrative, and kindly subscribe to help in building the rising membership of this channel. Every little support ushered means a whole lot to us. It is true that humans are wired to display several behavioral tendencies, but when one's perceptions and behaviors towards others, especially the same race, are unhealthy, it then becomes questionable and raises eyebrows. In this video, we are going to be examining cases of blacks working against blacks, narrowing it down to Hollywood and the entertainment industry. For the past couple of years now, there have been some serious allegations against popular American talk show host Oprah Winfrey on how Hollywood uses her as a handler for other black celebrities in Hollywood. Oprah Gail Winfrey, the famous black billionaire, was born on January 29, 1954. Known mononymously as Oprah, she features as an American talk show host, television producer, actress, author, and media proprietor. She is best known for her talk show, The Oprah Winfrey Show, broadcast from Chicago, which ran in national syndication for 25 years, from 1986 to 2011. Dubbed the Queen of All Media, she was the richest African American of the 20th century and was once the world's only black billionaire. By 2007, she was often ranked as the most influential woman in the world. For quite some time now, there have been lots of talks about how the entertainment industry and higher representatives use Oprah to keep black celebrities in line and perpetually under their control. The recent outburst from Taraji P. Henson, slamming Oprah for trying to kill her career, corroborates with past stories to confirm the extent of man's inhumanity to man. Taraji Pender Henson, popular American actress, Born on September 11, 1970, and has received several accolades, including a Golden Globe Award as well as nominations for an Academy Award and four Primetime Emmy Awards, recently made some remarks on the pay gap for black actors in Hollywood and slamming Oprah for trying to kill her career as revealed in an interview, signaling another red flag against Oprah. On the 20th of December, 2023, Henson appeared on Gail King's Sirius XM show to promote her latest film, The Color Purple which Oprah co-produced. The 53-year-old actor broke down while discussing pay disparities, saying that she'd been lowballed her entire career. I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, getting paid a fraction of the cost, Taraji says. I'm tired of hearing my sisters say the same thing over and over. You get tired. I hear people go, you work a lot. Well, I have to. The math ain't mathing. And I heard on the street, Taraji, you had the audacity to say you're thinking about getting, stopping acting. We said, stop talking. Hmm. Are you thinking about it? Uh, I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing my sister say the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yeah have to the math ain't mathing and when you start working a lot you know you have a team big bills come with what we do we don't do this alone the fact that we're up is a whole entire team behind us 
they have to get paid. So when you hear someone saying, oh, such and such made $10 million, no, that's not, that, that didn't make it to their account. Mm. Know that off the top, Uncle Sam is getting 50%. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So do the math. Mm -hmm. Now we have $5 million. Mm -hmm. Your team is getting 30% or whatever your team is getting, off of what you grossed. Sometimes not more. after what Uncle Sam took. Now do the math. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm, I'm, a, I'm only human. And, and mm -hmm. it seems every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling, when it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again. Mm -hmm. Like I never mm -hmm. did what I just did. Mm -hmm. And I'm just mm -hmm. tired. tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Cause what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What is that telling me? And if I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the f am I doing? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Taraji revealed that the industry isn't what it seems, as she has been low balled all these years and isn't paid what she is worth. She also clarified that she doesn't make a lot of money, as people think, and how she almost walked out on Color Purple due to the embarrassing pay offer. To support the claims made by Taraji P Henson. So many internet users had the following to say, Reading between the lines, Oprah and co. don't pay black actors, said Shubes on X, the social network formerly known as Twitter. Here's another one. Tough to become a billionaire if you pay folks fairly, wrote TM. Here's another still. Oprah is one of the richest black women in the world. Her having a voice on prominent projects where black women have complained, Monique and Taraji, about pay but not using it is something, said at Precious GNSD. And then this one. Oprah's skin is black, but she moves like the rich white man her wealth has allowed her to be, said Jasmine. In addition, the award-winning actress Taraji P. Henson has, over the years, spoken repeatedly about the pay disparity in the industry. A scenario that doesn't seem to have improved in any significant way, judging from her recent outbursts. For instance, some years ago when the award-winning Empire actor arrived for the 68th Emmy Awards in Los Angeles, on September 18, 2016, Taraji Henson's memoir made some bold claims about the way black actors are being treated in Hollywood. That year, she claimed that she was paid just 2% of what her co-star Brad Pitt earned on the Oscar-nominated The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. The star, who won the Golden Globe for Best Actress in a Drama Series in January for her role as Cookie Lion on Empire, said she was paid sofa change, in comparison to Pitt and co-star Kate Blanchett for the David Fincher-directed drama. Henson earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress for playing Pitt's adoptive mother in the film based on F. Scott Fitzgerald's short story. She spoke about the purported pay gap in her then-new memoir, Around the Way, released Tuesday. Both Brad and Kate got millions, writes Henson via The Guardian. Me? With bated breath, I sat by the phone for hours waiting for Vince, her manager, to call and tell me the number that I thought would make me feel good. Somewhere in the mid-six figures, no doubt a mere percentage of what Brad was bringing home to Angelina and their beautiful babies, but something worthy of a solid up-and-coming actress with a decent amount of critical acclaim for her work. Alas, that request was dead on arrival, the actor continues. I'm sorry, Taraji, Vince said quietly when we finally connected. They came in at the lowest of six figures. I convinced them to add in a little more, but that's as high as they'd go. Henson went on to claim that she was told she would have to pay for her own accommodation in New Orleans, where the film produced on a reported $150 million budget was shot. According to the actor, that meant three months of hotel expenses would be coming directly out of my pocket. Insult, meat injury. Ultimately, Henson took the role because she felt there were so few parts with weight for black actors at the time. Black actresses are consistently charged with diving for the crumbs of the scraps lest we starve, she says. This is exactly how a studio can get away with paying the person whose name is third on the call sheet of a big-budget film less than 2% what it's paying the person whose name is listed first, the actor explained. I knew the stakes. No matter how talented, no matter how many accolades my prior work had received, if I pushed for more money, I'd be replaced and no one would so much as a blink. In another chapter of the book titled On Being a Black Woman in Hollywood, Henson spoke about being edged out of a role that was specifically written for her. The actor alleged she was initially eyed for the part of a pregnant Russian sex worker named Darka in 2014's St. Vincent, starring opposite Bill Murray and Melissa McCarthy, but the role ended up going to Naomi Watts. Time and again, I've lost roles because someone with the ability to greenlight a film couldn't see black women beyond a very limited purview he or she thought fit audience expectations, the actor writes. It was a meaty gig. I would have loved it. Alas, I couldn't get served at that particular restaurant. Henson was, at the time, starring in the third season of Empire, 
the hip-hop industry drama created by Oscar-nominated filmmaker Lee Daniels, Precious and the Butler. However, a week before, it emerged that Henson and her co-star were being paid far less than many of their primetime television counterparts despite Empire being the highest-rated scripted drama on network television in the US. The data also found a disturbing trend that other black actors on television, including the recently Emmy-nominated stars of sitcom Blackish, Tracy Ellis Ross and Anthony Anderson, were earning less than their white contemporaries. Fast forward to recent times, in the interview with Sirius XM, Henson admitted she had considered quitting acting because of low pay and hadn't received a pay raise since the movie Proud Mary in 2018. These revelations have reflected particularly badly on Oprah Winfrey, who is one of the producers of the 2023 film The Color Purple. Where's my raise? I haven't, had, I haven't seen a raise in my income since Proud Mary. And almost had to walk away from Color Purple. Yes, ma'am. Who said what? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because you know what? If I don't take a stand, how am I making it easy for Fantasia and Danielle and Hallie and, and, and Felicia? Then what if, why, why am I doing this? If it's all just for me, what the, why are you here? We are to service each other. God is very clever. He put us on this earth and he made us all look different. He made it complicated. We need to figure it out. And we can, and we are. You have to look at, look at the glass, it's half full. It's always half full. I'm only human, the Empire star said. It seems every time I do something and break another glass ceiling, when it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again like I never did what I just did. And I'm tired. If I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the f am I doing, she said. J. Christopher Hamilton, an assistant professor of television, radio and film at Syracuse University, said Henson's revelations were no surprise to people of color working in the entertainment industry. The research, data leaks, labor disputes and talent have articulated this for decades, he told Newsweek. As offensive or shocking as some of this may sound, it's just how things work in Tinseltown. Black actors are paid less because they are valued less by the industry, Hamilton further said. After Henson's interview went viral, other black stars offered their support, with actor Gabrielle Union sharing her own experiences on X. Not a damn lie told, she wrote alongside a clip of the interview. We go to bat for the next generation and hell even our own generation and above. However, another incident is that of Monique and Oprah Winfrey. Monique Angela Hicks, born on December 11, 1967 and known mononymously as Monique, is an American stand-up comedian and actress. Although there are a couple of reasons why Monique and Oprah are not in the best of terms, the episodes that bears some similarities to Taraji P. Henson's comments comes from the time the two worked on the Oscar-winning film Precious. The issue then wasn't actually about salary disputes, but Monique's refusal to leave the United States to promote the movie overseas for free. This bred bad blood as Oprah and Tyler Perry, who co-produced the movie, turned petty towards her. The 56-year-old actress declined a request in 2009 to go to Cannes to promote Precious during her time off to be with her family, which reportedly did not sit well with the studio Lionsgate. The actress said in a CNN interview that she and her husband respectfully declined and that it was all a matter of different opinions on whether that kind of work warranted compensation. According to a Hollywood Reporter piece from earlier this year, Monique believes Precious director Lee Daniels, as well as producers Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry, then began spreading rumors that she is a difficult performer. Daniels has since publicly apologized, but the actress and the two producers, Oprah and Tyler, are still not talking to this day. So Tyler Perry says to me, listen, you may really want to consider promoting this film. Because if you get nominated for an Oscar award, your next film is three to five million dollars. And if you win it, your next film is six to eight million dollars. I said, Tyler, who are you talking to? I'm a black woman. Where do they pay those type of salaries, brother? I said, what I cannot do, Tyler, is work for free. I've done what I was supposed to do. I cannot go overseas and do this for free, Tyler. So then he goes on about his spill, you know. I said, well, listen, you can write me the check 
for me to go overseas. I don't care where the money comes from, but I'm not going to do it for free. He says, well, I don't believe in giving money away for free. I said, I don't believe in working for free. In the same CNN interview, Monique made statements about her career that reflects almost word for word what Henson has been quarreling with. The phone was ringing and the scripts were coming, she said. The offers just didn't make sense. Because if I accept that and I won the award, what are my sisters being offered that didn't win the award? And what does it say to the little girl who's not here yet that if we continue to accept these low offers? However, do we make it different and make a change? Furthermore, 50 Cent had also in the past made several negative remarks about Oprah being a user and a sabotage. Having had his own fair share of her insensitivity, he had a lot to say regarding Taraji's present slamming of Oprah. Curtis James Jackson III, known professionally as 50 Cent, is an American rapper, actor, television producer, and businessman. Born in South Jamaica, a neighborhood of Queens, 50 Cent began pursuing a musical career in 1996. He had said that he deliberately became enemies with Oprah Winfrey after she condemned his lyrics on her US talk show. During an interview with The Guardian in 2020, 50 Cent explained why he was at odds with Oprah Winfrey. During his rise to stardom, 50 Cent wanted to solidify himself as a successful man by making an appearance on Oprah's show. Not only would this mean a lot for an ex-drug dealer from Jamaica, Queens, but it would have also proved to his grandmother, who was a huge Oprah fan, that he's doing something productive with his life. But when the idea was pitched to Oprah, she made it clear that she wasn't interested in what 50 Cent had to offer. She was completely against everything that was in my music, 50 Cent said. So she ain't never going to have me on that show. I'm never going to reach that platform, which is confirmation of you being a huge success. So I just said, okay, if we can't be friends, then at least let's be enemies. After realizing Oprah wouldn't invite him, 50 Cent went full 50 on the talk show host. The rapper berated her fan base and even named one of his dogs Oprah. Eventually, the two settled their differences and were able to become friends. Yet 50 didn't concede to the notion of his lyrics being overly violent and misogynistic. Well, no, said 50 Cent when asked if he ever agreed with Oprah's views. Did you hear what I said? They are misogynistic, but the world is not under the same circumstances. Are you going to tell a painter what to paint? I'm an artist. Why am I limited to what you feel should be said? In film and television, they will show art that imitates life. Are you not aware of those situations taking place? 50 then went on to explain that Oprah never tried to look at things from his perspective, which resulted in him taking offense and refusing to look from her vantage point. The truth is, all things come from your experience he continued. Like, I got shot nine times and I wrote music about it. Everyone writes something that can connect in a big way based on a painful moment. So you're saying we're not supposed to articulate or write it the way we experienced? 50 Cent also touched on his beef with Oprah in his new book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter. In the book that was released in late April 2020, he uses situations, like his rift with Oprah, to explain how he outsmarted his environment to become the person he is today. Recently, 50 Cent expressed his displeasure with Oprah's mistreatment of Taraji P. Henson and pleaded with Henson to ditch Oprah and work with him instead, accusing Oprah of sabotaging black entertainers. In the same vein, Tyler Perry is another black celebrity who has also been slammed severally by black actors following similar anomalies with Oprah Winfrey. Tyler Perry, who was born as Emmett Perry Jr. on the 13th of September 1969, is an American actor, filmmaker, and playwright. He is the creator and performer of Mabel Medea Simmons, a tough elderly woman, and also portrays her brother Joe Simmons and her nephew Brian Simmons. Perry's films vary in style from orthodox filmmaking techniques to filmed productions of live stage plays, many of which have been subsequently adapted into feature films. Medea's first appearance was in Perry's play I Can Do Bad All By Myself, produced in 1999 and staged in Chicago. Over the course of his career, Tyler Perry has established himself as one of the most commercially successful figures in the world of American entertainment. Known for his highly popular dramatic works, Perry's stage plays and television shows managed to capture the masses because of their melodramatic twists and turns. While he is cited by some as a champion of black entertainment, other prominent black creators, such as Spike Lee, an American filmmaker, have often criticized Perry's impact on the industry. As a pioneering filmmaker, Lee set out to achieve completely different things through his art. 
mastering the art of political cinema through masterpieces like Do the Right Thing, Lee's films tackle difficult issues like America's violent history and the omnipresent racism that is embedded within the structures that govern the country. His vision of cinema exhibits a raw and powerful energy that consumes the audience, opening their eyes to different socio-economic realities. While talking about the landscape of black art, Lee claimed that artists should have personal liberty, but blamed creators like Perry for propagating racist ideas while capitalizing on the worst impulses of American audiences. Each artist should be allowed to pursue their artistic endeavors, but I still think there is a lot of stuff out today that is coonery buffoonery, Lee explained. In addition, he criticized the problematic symbols propagated by Perry's dramas. The imaging is troubling, he said. Beyond Spike Lee's critique, other members of the African-American community have also raised concerns about Tyler Perry's films. Some argue that his emphasis on issues such as poverty and abuse, while important to address, can sometimes veer into a one-dimensional portrayal of black identity. Other heated criticisms against Tyler stems from the refusal of dark-skinned actors to film with him as they are reportedly forced to play only stereotypical roles as villains. Many blacks also refused working with him due to perceived racial bias in his creative choices and decisions. One of the several criticisms is that of Jamila Lamu, a writer, cultural critic, and communication strategist. She criticized Tyler Perry's use of stereotypes in his work, arguing that it does a disservice to the black community. Our mothers and grandmothers deserve much more than that hack. Our fathers and grandfathers deserve more Mr. Perry, she said. Tyler Perry's movies also generate discussions and debates on social media, with some viewers criticizing him for repeatedly portraying the trauma that black women experience, while others argue that he sheds light on real-life issues that many black women can relate to. Colorism is a prevalent issue in the entertainment industry, as evidenced by the criticism faced by Hollywood and the allegations of abuse and exploitation by power players. Hollywood's reputation has been significantly tarnished with the lack of diversity and recognition for people of color and marginalized communities as seen in the Oscars' So White campaign. Black actors, regardless of their skill, level or name recognition, often found themselves auditioning for the same roles, highlighting the lack of diverse opportunities in the industry. And, pitiably, due to the limited opportunities in the entertainment industry, Black artists are often forced to take on stereotypical roles as a means of sustaining their livelihoods. In conclusion, celebrity rivalries are quite common in the entertainment industry. Some can be nasty while others are often manageable. But when members of same race and foundation are constantly at loggerheads with each other as a result of injustice, oppression and unfairness from fellow folks privileged to be in high and strategic positions, who they consider blood by race and look up to for ease in climbing the ladder to success, but who instead would work against the folks they are meant to support, protect, uphold, and shine the light on, then it can best be termed a monumental shame. That brings us to the end of this video segment. Hope you enjoyed it? Tell us what you think in the comment section below. We are always delighted to pick from your thoughts. Also, don't forget to support our works by just hitting that like button in front of you. Share with your families and friends to keep spreading our eye-opening contents and kindly subscribe to help in building the rising membership of this channel. Thank you for watching.